take two. Hopefully the sounds are working now. I had to reload the game. Um, as I was saying, we are just northwest of Texarkana, Texas, and we are going to fly down to New Orleans because there's a line of thunderstorms and rain in that area. I feel like recently we've just been flying clear weather or broken clouds or something so we can enjoy ortho. And I do have good ortho on the way, but today it's more about uh, doing something a little bit exciting. Small plane into big gusty winds, maybe some thunderstorms, we'll see. Um, anyway, we'll get in there, remove our static objects. Already got the ATIS from a minute ago, which is probably still good. We'll just run with that. Battery on. Avionics 1 and 2. Nav lights. Put our radio page here. And we'll go over to roots on this guy. Flight plan. We are in K Deck Kilo Delta Echo Quebec. And we're going to Louis Armstrong International, Kilo, Mike Sierra, Yankee. Not much to put in here. Texarkana, VOR, which is Tango X-Ray Kilo. To Hotel Echo Zulu. And then on the arrival for um, Louis Armstrong. So departure here. Winds are 069, so we're going to take off runway 08. And the arrival, I think I was planning. Right now, winds are 220 at 7 knots. Broken clouds, 7,000. Broken at 25,000. Um, but there's a big line of thunderstorms just to the west. So probably by the time that we get there, we'll either have to dodge those or go around to the west side of them. We'll see. Fortunately, this plane has weather radar, which is why I chose it. Uh, so runway 20 RNAV. RNAV 20 Yankee. Let's see if we want to put a transition in there. Uh, we'll leave it as a ray up. Be the rhythm four. Oh, we got to try it. rhythm four first. Via Hez, then the RNAV 20 Yankee. No transition there. Execute legs. Make sure. Oh, it's continuity. So that's pretty easy. Altimeter here is two nine or eight seven. And we are on FMS, so it's already good to go there. Do initial altitude. 7,000. Should be able to get 2,500 foot climb easy. What's our range on this thing right now? Twenty miles. There we go. Pretty easy. Basically already set up and ready to go. Uh, turn the avionics back off. We're going to start up here. Go ahead and get our beacon going. Oh, wrong one. There it is. Go with engine number one first. Yeah, the engine gen's working. Engine number one. I 
I know they did this in real life, having a ground power start with the premiere, because I've seen uh, Greg do it on his channel. But I, mean, I guess the ground power connects to the rear of the airplane, so you have to climb under the jets to disconnect it, I guess. You know, left gen, work in, get that on battery. Bleed air can come back on both and put both the blowers to low. Remove the... Oh, never had the ground power on. Never mind. Anti-skid, stall, stabilizer warnings, uh, let's see, windshield, we'll wait, pedostatic, we'll wait before we take off there. Unlock the lift dump. Good to go. Legs over here, radio, random squawk code 5207, or 5207, and the ident button is on the yoke there. Believe we can taxi all the way in the runway. Go. Get recognition lights on for taxi. Seatbelts, no smoking, and galley lights. Double check what modes we've got on the autopilot. So we're roll for takeoff. Vertical speed one is runway heading here. Heading for takeoff, then we'll switch to nav once we're in there. Okay. So, heading and vertical speed and initial climb to 7,000. Retard, retard, retard. Melon's here. What's up, buddy? You ain't missing nothing, boy. You flown an airplane before. The dolphin, yes. Alrighty, we'll see ya. Try not to, but we are flying towards some storms. Not going to, that's why I chose to fly to uh, Louisiana. I want to fly into some storms. 
leave the ignitions on for start. All of our rudder trim, rudder boost is on. Lift dumps are unlocked. Trim for takeoff, flaps are set. Transponder code is good. The only thing left on the enunciator is parking brake and ignitions, which is fine. Dolphin win, I guess so, yeah. We still need uh, if they're to make one that actually looks like a dolphin. Landing lights. And I'll go ahead and turn the radar on too. Jazz, 954, some more information for you there. Company traffic just did a contact. Uh, no problem with the visual approach on the runway 09 reported by the uh, aircraft. Okay, we copy that. Thanks so much. Do full power takeoff because it's a short runway. Bring it back a little bit once we're in the air. Better late than never. The visibility reported was two and one quarter statute miles in uh, mist. There was some uh, thunder shower, uh, rain associated with thunder showers that's passed through. Ceiling uh, 2,600 broken, 3,300 broken. Ceiling 6,500 overcast. Temperature 20, dew point 20. Get the latest meter. Uh, altimeter in Fredericton 2,973. Two nine seven three, Jeff. Nine five four. Alright, good. Autopilot on here. Straight to our cruise altitude, we've got 31,000. I guess we'll go another 20 miles, uh, we'll keep you posted, Jet 954. That's not a 54, Roger. Flight level change, almost like 200 knots. Bring our throttles back up. I have a 
Guy back up, so don't accidentally hit button. We Jazz Niner, contact center one two zero that's small two five advise you're heading. Twenty point two five just uh seven eight nine welcome. Not sure what the radar range is um, exactly for weather, but nothing within eighty miles in front of us right now. But still looking at next rad on Sky Vector. Quite a bit of turbulence at some point in between, and uh, showers currently over the airport. Thunderstorms to the northwest, which is where we're coming from. Leave a 767, continue to send 6,000. 6,000, 6,000. To Kelly, how's it going? Air Canada six six three, contact center one two seven one two. Two seven one two, Air Canada six six three. Let's pull up a little nav map and see where we're going. So here's our runway. Uh, listed as 19 in the game, which it may be, but uh, 20 on Sky Vector. So you press control 120 decimal 1. We'd like to continue uh, descent and uh, continue for hit get. Jazz on a 5-4, Roger, continue descent 4,000. 4,000, Jazz 954. I'm doing pretty well, can't complain. Flying some imaginary airplanes. We're flying towards some thunderstorms, so hopefully it's going to be a little bit exciting on the arrival. There's also a convective outlook where we're flying now, so there may be some turbulence, but it's smooth sailing so far. Okay, hold for the position, 4,000 feet, left-hand turns, expect for the clearance, 1430, thank you very much, good night, five four. Leaving um, basically Texarkana, and we're flying to New Orleans. I'll pull the map again. I'll show you. Encore three four five six. We have zero seven zero is heading. Encore three four five six heading zero seven zero is approved for deviation. Jalen Helms, right, zero, uh, seven, Texarkana. Zero, we're about to pass over right now. Heading over this VOR, and then we'll turn directly south. Armstrong, KMSY. Okay. Continue descent, 4,000. 
coming over Lake Pontchartrain. The I'm not sure we'll be able to see much of it, but the uh, the ortho is really cool around Louisiana. It's interesting. Go ahead for 220. Okay, got you there now. Thank you. And uh, clear direct max on course. Direct max on course, Porter uh, 220. Canada does not look like a big town. Porter two two zero contact center one two zero that's one two five. One two zero two five Porter two two zero good day. Pathfinder 05325, ready to check. Pathfinder 05, 8555, how you read me? That's loud and clear, 5x5. Five five. Roger. Pathfinder 05, please. Pathfinder 05, Senator Gaday again, the uh, Greenwood altimeter is 2982. 2982, Pathfinder 05. Commence uh, King Air Fox, Dr. Jackson Golf, which one, 32.5. Charlie Fox, that's Eric Chagall, nice to hear your voice again, and again the altimeter in St. John, uh, 2978, uh, your number two for the approach. 2987, check number two, you continue with our uh, holding clearance. It's Eric Chagall, confirm. All right, I'm just coming up on booty now. Sierra Mike Center, good day, continue fine, flight level 260. Flight level 260, uniform, Sierra Mike. Echo request. Echo, go ahead. Yes, requesting there he is. Zero, zero, echo, climb four, so I'll do this real quick because we're still on climb. climb. Four, Got some time. Echo, um, here is the website that I use. This is Simbrief. Simbrief.com. Uh, you'll need to make an account, and once you're in there. 
uh, you go to dispatch, dispatch system, and you'll get this page. We're going to do create new flight. And you can save your selection defaults. OFP is operational flight plan. So I've got it for Delta Airlines because I'm familiar with that. But I think the default is Lido, which is what a lot of European airlines use. Either way, the information is basically going to be the same, and I got my uh, units in pounds. So, just as a uh, tutorial, we'll just do KMIA, which is Miami, to Atlanta, KTL. And then your alternate will be chosen automatically, and then you got to choose your airframe. So, we'll do 737 800, which would be 738, which is. Seven thirty-seven eight hundred, um, and then you would choose your departure runway, arrival runway, based on weather. And the way that I figured that out, if you look down here where your route is, um, it'll show you your departure, your fixes, and your arrival. If you go to the sky vector button, this will pull up live Head weather. Um, and you can hover your mouse over the airport and it'll give you a METAR. So you can see here in Miami, winds are 3008, gusting 15 knots. And Atlanta is 210 at 6 knots. So you can choose your runways like that. Also, leave this page up too, because you'll get uh, charts for it. So if you want to do the ILS 27, you get an approach chart which shows you your uh, initial approach fixes, all the transitions that you can possibly do. Oh, coming up on our cruise altitude. As well as the localizer, frequency, and approach course for the runway. So you want to use the runway that's, um, you want the wind coming head on, right? So if winds are, let's see, in Atlanta, 210 at 6. All the runways are east to west, so we want one of the two runways, 270, 260 on the runway. So we can take 26 left, 26 right, 27 left, 27 right, 28. Uh, you don't want to land with a tailwind, you always want a headwind. Hope that makes some sense. So then when you get this done, for, if you're flying the tubes, the next part is really important. If we're flying, we're just flying GA today, so I just use Sky Vector. I don't even load the flight plan, but if I'm flying a tube, once you get all your information in here, uh, your departure runway, arrival, cargo, we'll do auto, passengers auto, zero fuel weight auto, then click generate OFP. I think I fixed my mouse cursor, by the way, too. So now here's the, the important stuff. Uh, the most important stuff that you need for doing flight planning with the Zebo and stuff is on Just this little page if you scroll down. You get your cruise altitude, flight level 360, which is 36,000 feet. Top of climb winds, 060 at 20 knots. Your ISA deviation, P is positive, positive so it would be plus 13. Uh, obviously, M would be minus 13. ETE is expected time en route, nautical miles 543, total airspeed expecting you to be around 453 knots. Has your passengers, your cargo weight, zero fuel weight is a big one for um, putting your weight in the computer, the little tablet for the Zebo. Block fuel is the total fuel that you'll load for the flight. Uh, you don't really need minimum fuel for takeoff because the block fuel will generally get that to you. And then your FMS reserve fuel for the uh, performance initialization. Um, I'm doing one. I could I could do two to to show you the Zebo. Maybe I might do it later. Um, if you're going to be going to bed, because I got some stuff to do today, I'll come back. I'll do another one tonight, so maybe morning your time. Cost index is important also for the FMC because it tells the plane how much fuel to burn. Basically, the lower the number, the slower you're going to go. The slower you're going to climb. So ours would be five. I would probably boost that up to at least 50. Usually, if it doesn't give me a good one, I just put 200 because I don't, I don't care. It's not my gas. Um, then you've got your fixes down here. Here's the most important part for your flight plan itself. So you see, these are all initial, or these are all your nav fixes. Everything that says headly, 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 that is a departure. So we would put the middle fixes in first 
and do departures and arrivals last. Um, so we got an arrival, which is the Jedi 2. So we would, anything that's not on the Jedi 2 or the Headley 2, we would put in. So we go to direct Stiney, Wacko, Wassel, MJMs, Etor, Sharks, Larry. We'd put all those in. Lars. And then go back and then put the departures and arrivals in there. But it shows you pretty much everything that you need to know. Latitude, longitude, um, expected speed, 240.77 Mach. Um, time from last waypoint, time overall in flight. And it has your expected fuel on board on the bottom. So you can do point by point, which is actually, it's really close. So if you're flying like a 737 or something... Um, you started, what was our block fuel? 17 something. Block fuel is 17.9. And this is saying, at Barbara on the Headley 2 departure, I would expect you to have 16.1 thousand pounds on board. So you can monitor how much fuel you're using that way too. Next time I do a tube flight, I'll, uh, I'll pull up Sky Vector, or whatever it's page, Sim Brief, and, and walk through everything. It seems like a lot, but really, it's it's not. Once you figure it out, it's easy. Yeah, I'll probably do that later. Maybe, maybe this evening. This evening for me. So, like this, uh, this is the default FMC. So, you're, I saw that the pictures that you posted in the Discord, you were, uh, you're using like the default 737, which is fine. But this FMC kind of. It doesn't do VNAV, so the plane won't control, for example, the vertical path. So for us, we need to figure out when I need to descend. So if we look at RAYOP, I need to be above 2,000 feet. So we'll say 3,000 at RAYOP, and we're currently at 31,000. Ready to copy out of make call 025. The easy way to figure out descent, 31 minus 3, 28. So we have 28,000 feet, 3 nautical miles per thousand. So 28 divided by 3 is... Or 28 times 3 is 84. So 84 miles from Rayop, we need to start descending. So 15, 20, 30, 40... Basically, when we're about 40 miles from Zidco, we'll start our descent. Yeah, so that's that's the one that I was saying that you should download. It's free, and the Zeba mod is probably the best tube for X-Plane. You can tr control all your weight and balance, the tablet on the left, and the FMC is basically fully functional, just like it is in the real uh, 737. So you get a lot of that from the performance numbers. So for example, if your flight plan gives you a cost index of 50 or something, you put that in on the performance page. I get one free contact on one this might have... One yeah, this FMC doesn't even have a performance page. There'll be on the, the Zebo, it'll say perf in it. Uh, so you put in your cost index, what your cruise altitude is, and then you let the auto throttle will control all of that for you. Or you can look at your flight plan, and it'll say at a certain altitude you need to be at Mach 0.78 or something, and you can control that via the mode control panel, the autopilot panel that's up on the top of the glare shield. But with a plane like this, um, you can see I've basically got N2 at almost 100% here, and N1 is at 99.5. So N2 is RPM in a turbine. Uh, the N1 is the outer blades, and the N2 is the inner blades of the engine. 
So you generally want to keep those. I mean, you can go over 100% at high altitudes, which we're at now, flight level 310. Uh, not necessarily. Again, you get that from your performance initialization page. But in a plane like this, yeah, that's basically what I would do. There's a couple ways that you can climb, too. You can do vertical speed, uh, but the higher you go, the thinner the air becomes and the less efficient it is. So you can stall if you keep it on vertical speed. So what I do is, if you have FLC here on the MCD, I usually use that one, because you can click, click the button and then select what speed you want, and the plane will automatically pitch to capture that... Uh, that nose angle. Vertical speed we'll use for descent though. The Mike Golf Charlie is that the correction is clear to the St. John Airport by direct climb maintain five. Uh do you use the do you use the GTN seven fifty, don't you? I don't even think VNAV is a function on the default FMC. Mike Golf Charlie's at the final code change leveling at five thousand. I never use VNAV on this plane anyway, because it uses the default. I was just telling uh Joe Jordy how to calculate when you need to start descending without VNAV. Uh-huh. Like, for example, um, let's put this in. So we're four miles from there, so at Ray up 3,000. So 4,000 at Austin. Here's what it does. Oh. Uh, Why can't I input anything? KC3, Center, good morning. You're identified. Vectors for trying big turn right heading uh, 020 and find level 280. Won't even let me put a number in. Never mind. The reality, though, I mean, if you're using air traffic control, for example, how much would you even be using VNAV? Either flight level change or vertical speed, eh? Golf Kilo Quebec, contact radio and ATP5. Really, the, the only time that I use VNAV is when I'm flying the tubes because I don't use real air traffic control for the most part and then basically flies the whole thing for you. Oh yeah, here we go, boys. So we're flying to New Orleans specifically to try to get some weather. There's like a line of showers and thunderstorms around the airport, and I was just saying how I think most of the times I'm flying, I'm flying in places that have good weather so we can see the scenery. Not today, friends. Still ways to go. Continue right turn, direct right, go long course. 
Director Roy, call on course for KC three. Thank you. And the mouse cursor thing is still not fixed. I thought I'd fix that. It's, you should, I think people would generally say you should start with like the smaller G airplanes because you can learn the basics of navigation and stuff like that. But essentially, if you're flying uh, a Zebo, once you get your flight plan in, uh, you need to hit the nav button. There's a button on the MCP that says nav, and that'll use your, your flight directors will show you, it'll follow the course that you've got in the FMC. You can either control it like that, or you can control it by, by a heading mode. And uh, your nav source, you can see it says here on the uh, PFD, FMS means it's getting the nav information from the flight management system, the FMC. Although, if you if you manage to master the 737 before you get in a Cessna, then everything else will be super easy after that. Lawyer, Canada 663, That's kind of part of the fun, though, for me, of flying the tubes, is that it's so much, um, there's planning that goes into it, and there's a lot of systems management and stuff like that, so it's a lot different than flying a GA airplane, where a lot of it you're flying by hand. It's a different kind of flying, but it's rewarding, and it's in a totally different way. Plus, it's cool as shit to watch a replay of you landing a 737 or a 757 or something. Three contact center, one, two, seven, one, two, so 2712 for KC3 To be honest, if you haven't already, uh, I would I would eight say eight get the Zebo now rather than I mean don't even waste your time with the default 737 because the default airplanes are generally pretty bad. Other than the the GA stuff like the Cessna 172 is fine, but I wouldn't mess around with the default tubes because they don't have half the functionality of the, yeah, the Zebo or the real airplane. Here we go. Looks like he's doing a little storm dodging now. That's basically what you're doing now. I just wish I could fix, fix my mouse cursor situation. So I pointed something. It's So right now I'll put it on this little uh, warning light, the red one. You can see it's like up and to the left. I have no idea how to fix that. Should be down there. Mike 
Golf Charlie, turn left heading 0, uh, zero 025. Zero 025 on my Golf Charlie. Pushing about 70 miles till we start descending. Juliet, roll near India, descend level 200. Same level 200, over the roll India. I love flying at this time of day. Tracking real time too, real time, real weather. So we're definitely going to have to go into heading mode here. We cannot fly through. Red. I don't really want to fly through the yellow stuff either. Get a little bit closer, we'll go in this direction. Two six seven and center. Good day. Uh, you're looking for lower and void. Hey, from uh, we've been cleared to come with two hundred zero to come and double check the and then yet and we're playing for direct taking on this one. Cooler two six ten point level two six zero for now. Zero for now. Baby. Winds calm, 7 miles, visibility, light rain, few clouds, 3,500 broken at 12,000, broken at 25,000. Thunderstorm right to the northwest of the airport, and we're about to fly through two cells. Sorry about that. Nope. Sea direct to Suck Sagan, cross Suck Sagan, 6,000. Sea direct to Suck Sagan, cross Suck Sagan, 6,000. Clear share, 9190. So that's at 80 miles, so we got about 40 miles for we need to change headings. Pull up Sky Vector again here. Cooler 26, send 8,000, the uh, Lloyd Altimeter, 9 or 9 or 7. 8,000, Sky Vector, 9 or 7. Nine eight five two and ready to send one two thousand. One ready to send the one two thousand first one nine eight five two and we were at the switch over thirty three seventy two. Do you want us over there now? Please one three three seven two. Thank you. All right, the nine eight five two is up on thirty three seventy two. Why are you showing up black?
Station 9190, if you're not there, contact me now, 13445. Station 9192, this is with you, 3445. Station 9190, thanks. So 20, 20 miles, we'll start descending. I'm going to go ahead and put 10,000 as an initial descent altitude in here. It looks like we're going to miss this cell, but it looks like there's one right in our flight plan there. I'm tempted to just fly straight through this. <laughs> Descending. And our table one five five two, uh, three ten thousand three hundred fifty one zero oh, and uh, speed one six six. Table one five five two, center good day. I guess this was a thunderstorm that we were seeing on Sky Vector. Westjet 3, Westjet 204, every day, climb flight level 280. Climb flight level 280, Westjet 204. What plane is good to start learning in? I, I mean, people generally say, like, the Cessna 172, the systems are really simple, and you can learn the basics of flying and navigating and stuff that way. So we're going to go heading mode. 
Station on 4851 down at Christina Lake. Station 4851, I'll salute the uh, IFR. Thank you. Sorry, Glitch, I don't want to see what the fuel site was, I can't sorry, Alright, last call was at uh, Glacier 9190. Oh, sir, for Glacier 9190. Alright, Glacier 9190, check enhancing IFR, if you're on it. The default um, yeah, GA plans are pretty decent. But I would get the Zebo update, or Zebo upgrade, pretty quick. If you want to learn the 737, it's a lot better than the default. Check 9402, uh, you're down and clear. Down and clear, go on at this time. Alright, thanks for the bike, Thanks, see you later. And cross blue at 6,000. 6,000 now, cross blue at 6,000. Just many five feet. Let's just two zero four contact center one three four nine. 34 9 one 6 2 0 4 one you're clear to direct the uh, public pack in. one is zero one you're clear to uh, direct the full pack in. Going to eight after uh, suck take you're pre-direct to Penta. After suck take we're pre-direct to Penta. Airco one two eight. Well, there's some lightning. Although I don't think it's going to be too bad for us. It looks like you can get to the initial approach fix past the. Uh, Sure. Although it looks like there's an airplane like flying straight into it. Good luck, buddy. Check 985. We wish you the best. Level 2 2 one good day. Encore, 2 one 
Encore 3211, Center Gadet. Uh, for spacing in Edmonton, reduce your speed by 30 knots if needed. Alright, that'll put us at uh, 210, so Encore 3211. Center Gadet, Jazz 513 is with you, 20240. That's 513, Center Gadet, if you need to switch whiskey and people, increase your speed, best work, please. And we're maxed out for Jazz 513. Um, XATC Chatter to plug in. Jericho Whiskey, contact me now, 13372. Jerk Whiskey is with you on 3372. Jerk Whiskey, thank you, sir, and uh, you're here at Conklin Airport for an approach. Quick Conklin Airport for an approach to your Echo Whiskey. We should be able to go direct rhythm now. It looks like it's past the storm, so we're going to go. Okay, the 155. Direct two interchange two rhythm. Okay, we're 1552 to what? send uh, 6000 cross check ticket 6. Rhythm. I love your presence. Execute right, and over to NAS mode. 70 and 6,000, uh, cut the fake 6,000, exit 1552. Great. Oh boy, just wait till you start opening the wallet for X plane. It's all over. Downhill from there. Let's see, local Echo altimeter is. Two nine or eight eight. That's correct. Contact me now. One three four four five. Echo eight two eight. Up on one three four four five. One three Send one zero thousand altimeter to nine nine four. Nine nine four down to one zero thousand monster three. around now, seatbelts. Not dead yet, but we're not on the ground either. What 
Fun, eh? Let's see, unlock a beat guy again. Whatever little airplane friend made it to that thunderstorm. Oh yeah, baby, Bob Ross all the way. You been watching the Bob Ross stream still? Feral approach here. 
Smooth sailing now, too. Aircan 785, take your time and line up front. Who are they? Are they family? Man, I always butter it in this thing. It's just the rollout that's hard. Make sure lift dump is unlocked. It's funny because I remember a few years ago they made a big stink about people putting up his videos on YouTube, but they weren't getting any money. I'm pretty sure they weren't monetized. Now whoever's running that Twitch channel is probably making a mint on those those videos, eh? The, the speed dump is, uh, the lift dump is a speed break. In real life, in a lot of planes, it would overextend the flaps and extend the speed brakes, but when you pull the lift dump handle, I have it bound to a key, so I just press one when I touch down, and it deploys the, the spoilers fully. Yaw damper off. Take this from here. I will line up on two green two bear helmets and point the chair for the big spot. So, uh, what is the speed break? I don't understand then. Because when the Air lift dump is deployed, it looks identical as, a, as the, fo the spoiler is fully deployed. The only difference is that the flaps are also out. I still, it's weird, I still get really nervous when people, I'm um, landing when people are watching, that's crazy. Like, more nervous than playing guitar on stage, that's weird. April 
Wade, line up runway 23, keep that departing Delta 717 on site for official departure. Depart runway, uh, or line up runway 23 and we'll keep uh, that dog on site, Naval 758. I guess it, I mean, it makes sense that I'm not getting the full lift dump or spoilers or something, because it does not feel like it slows down much at all when you deploy the lift dump. But when I get off um, the runway 1, 9, here. 0, 1, 6, maintain visual separation, clear takeoff runway 23. 1906 will maintain visual separation, clear takeoff 23, maybe 7, Dodger 8. I'm going to press the lift dump button that I've got bound and see what it does. Rocket first. For 1695, line up 23, keep the departing. So that's a lift dump. You have the, the flaps don't extend or anything. And then if I press the deploy spoiler button, nothing else happens. Yeah, I've got that bound too. So I can do that, and that's... See, that's fully deployed on the speed break, and it's not... Watch the when I press the lift okay, up 11, again. 12, Charlie 4, Delta 4, It'll extend uh, it even further. That's the lift up. And then one more time, I'll, I'll extend the speed break. That's as far as you can go with the speed break, and then there's the lift up again. So I think that's all it does. I know I was watching a, a tech video about, I can't remember what the airplane was, but the lift dump in their airplane actually overextended the flaps. So your max landing flaps would have been 40, 45 degrees or something, and when they deployed lift dump, you would get the spoilers and the flaps would go to 70 degrees. But this, the flaps don't seem to do anything. 7339, get a line up runway 23. Up 23, Jordan 7339. That's why you always put it in the lock position when you're in the air, eh? Well, how do you accidentally deploy it? Seven three three nine contact departure one two eight decimal eight airborne clear takeoff runway twenty three. Get it? Twenty eight eight airborne clear takeoff two three Jordan seventy three oh. thirty nine. I'm guessing it didn't survive. So I think probably your speed, your approach speeds in this are a little bit higher than... Alright. Man, can you imagine being the pilot and then having all five passengers in the back die and then having to live with that? Holy shit. Caribbean 79, Charlie 4, Delta 4, Delta, ground 219. Charlie 4, Delta 4, Delta, ground 219er, Caribbean Airlines. Sub You would think, though, I mean, I would guess that when you're getting ready to land or something, you get a little bit of adrenaline boost, eh? Romeo Papa, good day, line up runway 23. Line up 23, Lima, Romeo Papa. Sure. 
Ground Jordan 7361 at Alpha Lima. Desmond 5 2 ground, taxi Bravo Charlie. Bravo Charlie, Desmond. Shit, I've got more than that in the premiere. And it's Jordan 7361 at Alpha Lima. Jordan 7361 ground, 2 3 is Dulu, Ultimate 2 9 5 8, taxi Alpha, hold short Alpha Kilo. I guess that's true. Sorry, long taxi. G Rams over here. We're almost there. K745 ground, any patrol 134 is unavailable. Taxi Delta on the 328, hold short Tango. Delta on the 328, hold short Tango, Canada 745. You guys are tech guys. So my mouse cursor is, it just started like a month ago. It's now showing way off where it is actually on my computer screen. The video output on OBS is the same as I've got as resolution in X-Plane. I didn't change any other settings, I don't know why. Yeah, 920, behind the uh, vehicle at Delta Victor, Continue, uh, Del sorry, continue Charlie to Holding Bay until 1835. After the vehicle, uh, Charlie to Holding Bay, 1835, Eric, Park it over here by this Ferrari melon plane. Borderless gaming negative. Seven three contact tower one eight three five. One eight decimal three five area three. Didn't you download uh, a freeware version of this plane, Melon? Alpha Kilo. Seven three six one taxi Alpha Hotel. Alpha Hotel drive seven three six one. Hey, Canada one one two one standby on tower one. Yeah, only in game. Like I said, I haven't changed anything in the, in settings. I go back 20 minutes to catch this landing, eh? I did float it a little bit. Boop. Right on that center line now, baby. Romeo Papa, departure one two eight decimal. Excuse me. Thank you. Departure of Martin, clear takeoff, 2, 3, Lima, Romeo, Papa, good day.
McFaddy sent me some video that showed how someone fixed it before. It was like some issue with force scaling, but uh, it didn't fix it for me either. Super annoying when I'm trying to describe where a button or something is to somebody. <laughs> the mouse cursor is, I don't know, like six or seven inches over the left. Alright boys, I gotta go be a real boy today, so we'll see you. Uh, Jordy, if you're out there uh, still, I'll, I'll try to do a 737 flight later and I'll pull up Sim Brief and show you how to do all that, put it in the FMC. But get the Zebo 737, don't use the default and shit. McFaddy, Ither, Melon, Joe Jordy, guys thanks for hanging out, thanks for being my friends. See you guys later. Peace. Wait, hang on. See ya.